they're teaching you something contrary to the truth, guess what? God didn't lead you there. You wanted to go there. But God is going to lead you in paths of righteousness, as David told us in Psalm 23, for his name's sake. God is going to lead you into the right place, but you must humble yourself under him and realize he's God and not you, that he's smarter than you. No matter how many brains you have, God is smarter than you. He's smarter than me. He's smarter than the, the smartest man that's ever lived. Do you understand? God is wiser than Solomon. God is wiser than Einstein. God is wiser than anybody you want to put up there and try to say was wise. God is wiser than them all. And he sent his son Jesus to die for you. Jesus humbled himself. Jesus could have said, I'm a king. I don't have to do this. I don't have to be born in a, st in a stable. I don't have to be humbled in this way. But yet Jesus, though he was rich, yet for our sakes became poor. That he threw, that so that we through his poverty may be rich, rich in eternal life, rich in faith, rich in the abundant blessings that God gives to, to us. You understand? Those abundant blessings include the fruit of the Spirit. The Bible says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. The fruit of the Spirit is peace. You understand? It's joy. You understand? It's long suffering. <laughs> It's gentleness, it's meekness, you understand? It's goodness, it's faith, it's meekness and self can, it's meekness and temperance. Temperance is the ability to control yourself. You understand? Where you don't lose your cool under pressure. God can give you that. God also gives you honesty and integrity. You understand? Good character comes from God. A good name comes from God. The Bible says a good name is better to be desired than much riches. But if we don't humble ourselves under God, then how can he exalt us? No, we want to be exalted like some of these people out here who have exalted themselves from pastor to bishop to apostle. And they get people to come in agreement with them and ordain them higher and higher titles. But they're still whoever they were. You understand? They haven't changed. So if they're preaching wrong, now they're a bishop preaching wrong. If they're a bishop preaching wrong, now they become an apostle teaching wrong. You understand what I'm saying? That's why God selected his own apostles. He doesn't need ours. God selected his own. God was the one that put some in the church to be apostles and prophets and teachers. Now people are mocking these ministries that God created. There are so many people mocking. There are so many people that call themselves evangelists, but they don't have the ability to properly witness for the truth of the gospel. There are people that are calling themselves prophets, but they don't have the ability to tell what God is really doing. And they're not in line with the word of God. They're just walking up to people and telling people they're not right. But they haven't gotten any divine revelation from God to do so. They're just mimicking. And there's a punishment for that. There's a punishment for false teachers. If you're studying the word of God, you're going to get the truth. But if you refuse to teach the truth because you're afraid of what could happen... Because you can't control people when you're teaching the truth. I'm standing here teaching you the truth. I have no control over you. You have a right to accept it or reject it. That's on your own. But I'm going to teach you the truth. As long as I have the ability to teach you, you trust that I'm a voice speaking the things that God would have me to say. I'm going to tell you and teach you the truth. I'm not going to control you. Can't make you obey. But I can tell you there are consequences for disobedience. And I can tell you there's blessings from obe for obedience. Amen. The Bible says obedient to obey is better than sacrifice. Okay. So no need in you trying to give something as up to the Lord if you're not obedient. You defeat the whole purpose. But if you're willing and you're obedient, the Bible says you shall eat the good of the land. Why? Because 
You're not they're wasting all your substance in iPhone sixes and all the things of this world. Not saying you're a sinner because you bought one. You understand? But most of the people that are buying them and spending a ridiculous price that they could use to feed their families and pay their bills, but they want a, a iPhone 6s. You understand? You don't need it. I have a flip phone. It's old school, but it still makes calls and it still receives calls. Amen. Eventually, I have to replace it. I don't see myself replacing it with the most expensive phone on the market because I got a family to take care of. Amen. Amen. God is good. He can provide things for us. But he told us not to covet, not to lust after him. And he says, if you want to have a relationship with him, you got to humble yourself. God will exalt you. Some may say, well, why aren't you in a building full of all these people? Why are you in your home preaching? All I have to do is stay humble before God. God will exalt me to where he wants me to be. Whether he wants me in the building or he wants me to stay here and just preach to a few. Doesn't matter. What matters is if I'm faithful and if I'm preaching and rightly dividing the word of truth and if I'm apologizing when I make mistakes like I did at the beginning of the sermon. I said we're going to 1 Peter 4, but it doesn't have the information there that I was that I'd studied to preach. It's in 1 Peter 5. So guess what? We correct ourselves midstream and we go to 1 Peter 5. You know? You understand? That's called humility. You understand what I'm saying? Because most people won't do that. Most people will just go with the flow and try to make up something. They'll go in the chapter and they'll stay there and totally abort whatever message they had just because of pride. Humble yourself. If I taught something wrong, like what I used to when I was teaching that people should tithe and then came back, and realized I was teaching wrong. And I asked for forgiveness and I corrected myself and said I was teaching wrong because I came to an understanding of the truth that it was a perverting of scripture. Most people won't do that. Most people will stick with the lie for the rest of their life. But guess what? You're going to stand before God. God knows the truth about tithing. God knows that he sent his son so that we'd be free from the law, so that we don't trying to get our righteousness through the law. God knows what he was doing when he sent Jesus. So to me, we, we would have a relationship with God and God could fellowship with us because our sins were truly washed away because the Old Testament sacrifices couldn't wash away your sins. It was just the temporary system of atonement set until Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, you understand, would come and die for our sins and rise from the dead on the third day. Now, through him, we can live holy. We can be counted holy and worthy before God. When before, we were dead in trespasses and sins, amen? God comes to quicken our spirits and our lives so that we can worship him in spirit and in truth. In truth meaning getting true understanding of the word. In spirit mean with your whole heart and your human spirit, you worship God with the help of the Holy Spirit. People have twisted that because they want to push their doctrines. But worshiping God and having a relationship with God, you can't do it without prayer. And you can't do it without humility. And we'll continue to talk about things that we must be able to do and have a relationship with God. It's not hard if we apply ourselves. God will give us the strength and the, want, and the, and the willingness to want to fulfill his will. To want to pray for one another. To want to humble ourselves where we're not all that. So you don't have to feel less of a person. Because you don't know the scriptures I know. It doesn't matter because there's somebody that knows more scripture than I do. But I thank God for what he's given me. And I know through the Holy Spirit, he can give me proper interpretation of every scripture that he's put in the Bible. If I stay humble before God. And I do so in a way of love. I share the truth with you in love. When I told my children prior to this sermon to obey their parents 
I do that in love because I know I was disobedient and I had to answer for it. Now I see my kids being disobedient sometimes in ways I was disobedient. And you know what? Now I see what my parents felt when I wouldn't listen to them. But guess what? I'm going to teach you to repent because when you're listening to your parents, God's going to bless you. You understand what I'm saying? He's going to make your name great. He's going to give you gifts and talents and abilities that you can use to be a light that shines in this world. But if you're disobedient, you're cutting your life short. Did you know that? Do you know that, kids? You're cutting your life short every time you decide you want to live and do what you want to do. You need to humble yourself and realize your parents that are teaching you the way of the Lord are smarter than your teachers in school that are trying to teach you to rebel against God. Mm -hmm. You understand? You got to humble yourself in the sight of God and realize that any gifts and any abilities that you have is because God gave them to you and the Lord can give them and the Lord can take them away. You understand what I'm saying? Everything that you think that you, you're so skilled at, God can take those skills from you. If I'm not proper in my teaching of the word, God can take all that knowledge from me. He took it from Nebuchadnezzar. He ended up in a field for seven years because of his pride. I preached on that one time in the past, eating grass and becoming insane. And then after seven years, God allowed his mind to come back to him. He learned a, a hard lesson. When you humble yourself, God will exalt you. And God will put you in a place where you can shine your light. Doesn't matter if it's on your job. Doesn't matter. See, sometimes we think, when we're having issues on our job, that God might not have put us there. But in actuality, if you're serving God, God can use you to be a light on a dark job. You know, and those rewards are greater than any salary they could ever pay you. God can do so much for us if we learn to be content. And he can exalt us right when we need it. He's always right on time. He never makes a mistake. Oftentimes, through our own fleshly attitudes, we end up hurting ourselves when it comes to a relationship with God. In our homes, if we humble ourselves, even if we're in a marriage that's been in turmoil, could have been for weeks, could have been for months, could have been for years. If you humble yourself, God can turn it around. God can do what you can't do. You can't change another person. You understand? Mm -hmm. You can only pray for them and stay faithful to serving God and watch what God does. Eventually, that person will come to the understanding that they're not doing what they should be doing. And your hope is that they'll repent. But there are situations where people don't repent. But guess what? If you're serving God, it'll be well with your soul. Amen? Amen? Even if your children aren't acting right. If you stay faithful, it'll be well with your soul. <laughs> and that's what you got to understand. We're going to stand before God and give an account all by ourselves. And it's only those who have stayed faithful to the Lord that will get into heaven. And if you've been unfaithful, you have the opportunity, if you're still living, to repent. You have the opportunity to not only ask God for forgiveness and tell him that you're sorry for the sins you committed. You have the opportunity to turn from those sins and watch God wash them away and they won't even come up. To me, there's no deal on earth that can beat that deal. So I want to have a relationship with God through humbling myself and realizing any gifts, any abilities that God give me, he could take them away. I'm just thankful for what he's given me. And I want to share it with the world in a way that doesn't make me feel like my head is in the clouds. And I wish that people who have big titles that really truly claim to love Jesus would become more approachable. Because folks leave churches because they're you can't talk to the bishop. They're too smart. You can't show them anything in the scripture. They're too smart. 
in their mind. But let me tell you something. God knows how to deal with that. You just stay faithful to serving God and watch him turn your life around. Amen. Amen. Stay humble. God will exalt you in due time. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for giving me the ability to preach this wonderful gospel. And I just pray that you've taught me as well as those who have heard the gospel a valuable lesson that it is all about you and we were put here to glorify you and that our lives need to be examined and evaluated to see if indeed they glorify you and I pray that you'll give us a heart and a desire to seek you and to grow in your grace and I ask you for mercies upon those who've come today I'm thankful for those that you give an ear to hear me teach your word most importantly I'm thankful for what the Spirit would say through me because you amaze me and what you do. And I just ask God for your blessing upon those whose hearts will turn to you, whether they're in this home, whether they're on the phone, whether they're over the internet and they're going to hear this sermon in the future. Lord, I just pray that you will stir the hearts of those who truly want to know you and want to grow in their relationship with God and realize there are principles that if we put into place, we will be successful in you. I ask for your grace and mercy and your strength and your power to be in my heart and in my life by your spirit and by your holy word in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You are dismissed. Go in his grace and praise the Lord. Hallelujah.